Hi everybody, got another dissection here for you today. This is Prosopocoilus savagii. This is an African stag beetle, uh, probably from Cameroon or somewhere similar. Stag beetles are members of order Lucanidae. This is an order of beetles uh, within Coleoptera and within Scarabidae, so these technically count as uh, scarab form beetles. The most striking feature of uh, stag beetles is these large antler-like structures here, which is where they get their name. The antlers are used in a very similar way to uh, stags, uh, in that these are used to fight between males uh, for anything from territory to food to mates. Stag beetles display sexual dimorphism, meaning that the males and females look different. Uh, these antlers are only present in the male ones. Before I get on to the actual anatomy of the beetle, uh, there's some interesting stuff about sexual dimorphism in stag beetles. Male stag beetles display allometry. The antlers in stag beetles are subject to something called the allometric scaling law. Uh, allometry is where one particular body part is greatly increased in size relative to the rest of the body. This means that as the beetle's body size increases linearly, the size of the antlers increases logarithmically. Antler size in male beetles is a secondary sexual characteristic, uh, which is meant as a display to female beetles, uh, basically indicating that the bigger the antlers are, the more energy that the male beetle has to put into a cosmetic appearance like this, uh, indicating that it is a suitable mate and a fit mate for the um, female beetle. Allometry is also seen in other places across the animal kingdom. A good example of this is in elephant skeletons. So uh, while the elephant's skeleton is in the same proportions as, uh, for example, a mouse skeleton, the, the legs are relatively the same uh, size proportionate to the body, uh, the thickness of the bones in elephants is greatly, greatly increased uh, simply to compensate for the massive weight of the body. This particular beetle I bought at a trade show about six weeks ago, it's just reached the end of its natural life. Uh, most beetles will spend anything between one and three years underground uh, before emerging as these adult beetles. Uh, they'll only spend about three months as adults. So looking at the head of this beetle first, we can see firstly a lovely view of the eyes here, these sort of uh, little droplets of water here. Uh, these are compound eyes, I've mentioned in many of my other videos. Uh, compound eyes are made up of units called omatidia. You can also see a lovely view of these antlers here with the toothed insides. These will uh, be used either to grip objects the beetle needs to manipulate, uh, or as I said, to spar with other male beetles uh, to compete with them. The beetle here is split into three sections, the head here, the thorax here, and the abdomen over here. Uh, this top bit here is called the pronotum, and this small, sort of vaguely triangular shaped bit here is the scutellum. So, as, all, as in all insects, the beetles have two pairs of wings, which are hidden under here, and three pairs of legs, six legs in total. Uh, the outer pair of wings are hardened to form elytra, this sort of shell-like structure over the top here, and the flight wings are underneath. As far as the legs go, we have the fore legs, the mid legs, and the hind legs. Each leg is separated into three sections, the femur, the tibia, and the tarsus. The tarsus at the end has these claws here. In this species, you can see it has these uh, two uh, big claws and this one dainty little claw underneath here. Unlike some species of beetle uh, that do not eat as adults, this one does. It has mouth parts, which you can see here. As I said, some species will uh, just rely on the energy reserves they built up as juveniles to sustain them through adulthood. However, this one will eat. Uh, you can see the mouth parts are divided into three sections. Here, you can see these smaller ones at the bottom are the labial palps, labial meaning lip. Uh, then the maxillary palps up here, uh, maxilla being uh, the equivalent of the jawbone in mammals, uh, and these in the middle are the gallia. The palps will be used for manipulating objects near the mouth. Uh, things like spiders and tarantulas have structures called pedipalps, which are highly modified palps that almost act as auxiliary legs. Uh, these can be used for anything from manipulating prey uh, to having sexual functions in some tarantulas. I've uh, folded one of the antennae out here, so the, the beetle has a pair of antennae. This is the right one from the beetle's perspective. Uh, you can see it is segmented, so there's these uh, small uh, sort of ball-like objects that join together to make it here, and then the fringed margin at the end. The antennae is a sensory organ. In a lot of insects it will be used uh, for olfactory communication, uh, especially moths and cockroaches uh, do a lot of communication via smell. Some moths and cockroaches will employ something called combinatorial coding in the brain. That is when the insect will pick up a smell uh, and the molecule that smell uh, is created by 
will uh, impact on the antennae here, and then in the brain that will ping off uh, several different uh, sensory nodes, uh, the combination of which tells the insect what that insect is smelling. This is especially important for things like cockroaches, which do a lot of their sexual communication by smell, uh, using molecules like periplanone. I've now removed the legs from this beetle. You can see the underside here. Uh, there's the segmentation of the abdomen at the back. These are where the leg attachments were, so the leg attachments for the hind legs, the mid legs, and the forelegs. I'm now going to turn this over, uh, pin the beetle body down, and uh, try and have a look at the wings and the elytra. So I have now pinned the uh, beetle down onto its ventral side. Uh, so its dorsal side, its back, is facing upwards. I've also opened these elytra up. You can see they attach here. This is the primary pair of wing attachments for the first pair of wings. These are the hardened elytra shells. And you can see the delicate flight wings underneath. Uh, I'm now going to remove these elytra and try and show you the flight wings in more detail. Uh, so I've removed the elytra, uh, which I've pinned down over here, and then uh, exposed these flight wings. So I've pinned one out so you can see the scale of it. Uh, so the total surface area of both of these flight wings is roughly double the surface area of uh, one face of the beetle's body. Uh, in my previous uh, dissection of Arictes nasicornis, that was the European rhino beetle, uh, I showed you the uh, wings here. Uh, however, that uh, both of those specimens were very desiccated. These are it's a much fresher specimen. Uh, so the wing actually folds out, if I get this one, very delicately over here. You can see this sort of veined texture of the wing here. So I've now removed the ventral side of the thorax of this beetle, exposing some of the organs inside. Uh, a lot of this stuff around here uh, is the stomach contents. You can see it's sort of wood pulp kind of stuff. Uh, this will also uh, be a mixture of hemolymph, uh, which is uh, the insect equivalent of blood. Uh, an interesting thing here is this uh, fibrous pattern here. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Uh, I'll have to look up and when I edit the video I might be able to add something in here about what this is. Uh, however, it looks to be a sort of fine mesh network of some kind of organ. Looking back into the uh, main body of the beetle, uh, these dark structures are the very top, the dorsal side, so the, the insect's back uh, of the, ab uh, the thorax. Uh, I suspect these are the accessory heart structures. So insects don't have a closed circulatory system with uh, veins and arteries, blood vessels. Uh, instead, they pump hemolymph around the body. Uh, and these structures, I believe, at the back here are what uh, pump the hemolymph around the body and allow oxygen to fuse through it. Okay, I'm now showing you the inside of the beetle's head. You can see the eyes and antennae here. Uh, this dark structure uh, down here is the insect's brain. Okay, this is uh, the insect's head. Uh, I've removed the brain matter and uh, digestive tract uh, portions from the inside of the head. You can see some of the brain matter along here. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you here is uh, just how these pincers work and the joint attachments. So if I move those, you can see how the joints work on the inside of the head there. Here is a much better view of the heart structure, which runs down the back of the abdomen, the dorsal side. Uh, these, as I said, these accessory hearts will pump hemolymph around the body to allow oxygen to diffuse into the insect's tissues. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, this video may not be up for a few days after recording because uh, the computer I usually edit my uh, videos on is broken at the moment, uh, but it'll be up as soon as possible. Thanks and take care.